start this build off, I'm gonna be using this action figure injection plastic molded kit. It's the same one I used in my last video. This one actually went together a lot easier. I think it, because I've done it before and this kit just seemed to be a better quality than the last one for whatever reason, even though it's the exact same kit. Once the base is fully assembled, I can start to modify it so it looks more like a droid and a robot instead of a crash test dummy. So I start with the head, and I'm just marking out some pieces here that I'm going to grind away with my Dremel tool. the eye, I'm using this bead, but it sticks out a little too much, so I'm going to sand down to about halfway and then glue it on. I'm using these pieces from another action figure, and I'm going to make them into sort of a gas mask, one on each side of the face. I picked up this container of crazy glue, not for the actual glue, but because the tip of it here looked like the top of a cowboy hat, and that's exactly what I'm going to use it for. For the brim of the cowboy hat, I'm just going to use a piece of styrene and then attach the two together with super glue. The flat brim looks fine, but with a little bit of heat, I can add a curve to the brim and make it look a little more traditional. I'm gonna be working on the torso next, and so I'm using this really thin super glue and locking the two joints here together. This will make it easier to add these small pieces and detail bits without things bending on me. These pistons here are made out of some thin styrene tubing and some armature wire. And this metal bar here is also some armature wire. I wanted him to be missing his right arm. And so I'm taking off the forearm and the hand and replacing it with just a piece of plastic glued on to the original joint.
I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the legs at first. In my previous video, MD206, I used the original legs and then just added parts to it. But this one, I wanted something new and fresh. And so I actually took off the bottom half of each leg and I'm building them back up from scratch using some pieces of plastic, some metal tubing, and bits and pieces from the original leg like the joints and the feet. These are the same cheap craft beads that I use for the eye. They're just cut in half so they're not as bulky. I even made some tiny spurs out of some wire and beads. Once I get the robot into the pose that I like, I lock in all the joints with that really thin super glue so that I can more easily work on other parts. For the bandolier, the belt, and the holster, I needed some really thin leather. And a good source of that are these cheap belts that have one side, or sometimes both sides, covered in this really thin piece of fake leather. These are perfect for model making, and if you need some thin leather, go uh, look for some cheap belts to destroy. For the ammunition, I'm using these pieces of styrene tubing. And I will put a link in the description for all the tools and materials that I've used during this video, including this styrene tubing. There will be Amazon affiliate links, which basically just means that if you buy it through that link, I get a small commission and you don't pay anything extra, but it can help me keep these videos coming. For the blaster, I drew a quick sketch for scale and then grabbed some parts from my Greebly bin. This was such a small item to work on, it was hard to film. So here's the final piece and where it will sit on our cowboy. And here's all the pieces before they get a coat of black brown primer. Since I'll be using contrast paint to paint the accessories, the belt, bandolier, holster, and hat, I'm going to be doing a gray and white dry brush over everything, and then using a Citadel paint, I'm going to be painting them brown to make them look like leather. Same with the wood handle as well.
For the main body, it just gets silver dry brush. And I use these makeup brushes because they get a really good, even coat of the silver. I'm gonna be using this white paint mixed with a little bit of this brown contrast paint to make more of a tan color that I'll use to paint parts of the robot. Moving on to the brown paint, I'm using the Citadel paint again, and you don't have to use these model specific paints for your models. You can use any old cheap craft paint that you can get from any craft supply store. I've used those paints for years and they've been great. They have a great color selection for a really low price. I'm using these model paints because they're more pigmented and they dry really quickly, but they are more expensive for the amount that you get and they can sometimes be hard to find. I'm lucky enough to have a local store that sells them and other miniature models, which is great, but you can also get these model paints online. They're just more expensive. To start the weathering process off, I'm using this brown wash, which is just a mix of water and brown and black acrylic paint. And I brush it over everything. Then using a paper towel, I wipe away some of the excess. I then go in with a detail brush and some of that brown contrast paint. And I hit any areas that I know would be extra grimy. At this point, I realized that I was missing a belt buckle, and so I took a piece of its leg, cut it up, painted it silver, and added it as a belt buckle. For his poncho, I'm using just a piece of red cotton fabric, but it looks a little too new, so I'm gonna take some brown acrylic paints and black acrylic paints and just dirty everything up so it looks really messy and dirty. Then I dip it in a mixture of Mod Podge and water. Apply it to my robot. 
get it in a place that looks good, and then let it dry. I'm working on the display base now. This is just a wooden frame from the craft store and I'm gonna fill it with this pink insulation foam. To give it some initial texture, I'm using a piece of tin foil that's been balled up and this gives it a nice rough earthy texture. I also use this black paint mixed with a little bit of Mod Podge and some dirt from outside to add another layer of texture. I used some alcohol stain just to make the wood look a little older. And then some black wash, which is just again some black acrylic paint mixed with some water. The first layer of actual color paint that I use is this brown gray color. And then I'll cover it with some more Mod Podge water so I can sprinkle some dirt on for a final texture layer. To lock in the final layer of dirt, I first spray on some alcohol, and then I will drop on some more of that Mod Podge water. I went a little heavy on it on mine, and so I had to take a paper towel and dab some of it away. But after that, I let it dry, and then did a final dry brushing of some light tan before installing the final piece. I've decided to name this character C-45, also known as the fastest artificial hand in the West. If you enjoyed this video and you liked it, and if you have any comments, questions, concerns, put them down in the comment section and I will try to get back to you. I really like answering any questions you guys may have and any comments you just want to put down there. I appreciate them. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you in the next video. Enjoy yourself.